Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing? I hope you are wonderific and all that good stuff. <laughs> Welcome to day number five in March Collabness, aka as our special guest today has eloquently put it, April Foolishness. <laughs> I didn't even realize that this is going to be going into April, so how are we still going to call it March Collabness? So our wonderful special guest, Mike Deacon, hey Mike, has coined the phrase April Foolishness for the last two videos. I thought it was hilarious. I died. You'll hear it in the interview coming up. But thank you so much again, Mike, for joining me in April Foolishness. <laughs> I am a fan. I've watched you from the very beginning. So thank you so, so much. Guys, if you're not already following him, duh, check the description below. You'll see his link. Check out his video. It's going to be a good one. I gave him a really good challenge on this one. And he challenged me too. These supplies may look minimal, even more minimal than the last video. However, it's going to be a challenge. I'm hoping that the idea in my brain and in my mind is going to work out. And this will turn out. As you can see, I have some watercolor papier taped onto my tablet. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to speak French. I talk to CC too much. <laughs> and some pens, brushes, and my watercolors. Ooh, ASMR. Are you getting the tingles? Are you getting the tingles? <laughs> I need to go to bed. I'm going to finish this. As per usual, check the description for his link and wait till the end where I'm going to explain all the prompts and how they fit into this piece. It's going to be interesting. And yeah, let me shut up into the video. Let's go. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thanks, Sam. How are you? I'm good, super excited and slightly nervous for today's mm. prompts, but thank you so much for joining me on March Collabness. No, yeah, is it March Collabness though? Oh, I mean, oh, you know what? It's April Foolishness. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, you don't know this unless you. Well, actually, they wouldn't know this because we didn't say it in the video. But, guys, Mike made a cool point that technically these last two videos are in April, so they're not March Collabness. Mike has come up with April Foolishness, and I love it. <laughs> Okay, so having watched some of your videos over the last couple of days, um, I noticed that you had um, issues with Mojo and getting yourself motivated to do art. Yes. But when you do do your art, how does your mood affect the actual piece of art itself? Oh, that's a good question, actually. So it's funny because for me, I feel like it's a little different than a lot of other artists because a lot of artists will put their, you know, their feelings and their thoughts into their art and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, let it out that way. Whereas for me, I'm kind of the opposite. So like when I lose my mojo, if it's due to, you know, me just being down or, you know, not really in the right headspace, I actually can't do art. Like I'm not able to let that out in my art. So a, a negative emotion stifles me. And so I just don't do any art. I can't say that a particular emotion or, you know, a particular mood is ever reflected in my art, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. So you, you don't pick your colors based on how you're particularly feeling or no. the types of the types of texture that you're putting into your because I know you use a lot of what I call clusters and stacks yes. of tissue and paper and and fabrics and that kind of stuff yeah so for me do, do, it's not it's not like in my mind I just do art I just do whatever whatever comes out like, I think more of what do I feel like doing today as far as the type of page, whether mm. I feel like using paint that day or whether I feel like 
doing collage that day or whether I feel like actually drawing that day. But, but it's okay. never well, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's not go too far down that rabbit hole just yet, because that's going to come okay. into a question later on okay. um, ab about how you forward think. Ah, so, okay. okay. So you've answered the question as in your mood kind of dictates more as to whether or not you do do that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I get that. I get that. Okay. So for your first prompt. Now okay. you can use any of these prompts in any order. And these okay. are going to be fairly kind of open. And I did think about you when thinking of these prompts as to whether or not they would be suitable for your kind of art that you create too. Okay. So I was being very nice. Oh, that's sweet of you. <laughs> I wasn't as nice to you, but thanks. <laughs> no, 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 you weren't. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> no, you, you, you really did challenge me, but I'm hoping these will kind of make you think a little bit. Okay. So your first one is to include somewhere in your art project some geometric shapes. That is so interesting. I'm not going to say why, but that is very interesting and I'm actually excited. And you'll, you'll figure out down the line why. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay, so somewhere okay. in there, mm -hmm. some geometric shapes. Okay. Yeah. Of your I choice and size. Okay. And I'm not even saying what materials that those geometric shapes need to be in either. Okay. So either fabric, paper, whatever, wood, Anything. you name it. Okay, I like that. And what one. those geometric shapes are, are down to you. Okay. Okay, so Any your shapes. second question then. Okay. Out of all of the skills that you have, is there one particular skill? that you don't have that you would love to be able to master? Art, like we're talking about art, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I would say that, so one that I don't have, like that I don't have at all, that I would just like to possibly master, or one that I'm not good at that I would like to master? Either, either, either. Okay. I would say, Actually, let me think for a moment. Because I know with some people, they would say things like, I can't draw faces. I yeah. Can't draw, I can't draw hands. Or, or and it's funny I, because every that's time I draw. what I was, yeah, that's what I yeah. was going to say was, was drawing. It's something I do. It's something yeah. I like that I, it, it's what started my art when I was a kid. But yes. it's, it's difficult for me. But I don't want to use that as my answer because I kind of already did with someone yeah. else. <laughs> and, I, and I'm I, worried. I, I'm worried about what your prompt will be if it has to do with that. So I'm oh, not going to well, use drawing. My questions and my prompts aren't related. Oh, they're not. Okay. No. So then I would, I would use that answer then because that's really the only one that makes sense is basically being able, not necessarily being able to draw because mm -hmm. I feel like I, I can draw. But being able to do it freely and loosely, because for me, when I try to draw a face, I, I get in my head. It takes me forever. I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, this eyebrow has to match this eyebrow and this eye mm -hmm. has to match this eye. And that's why I don't draw often and why I would prefer to draw, scan it and just print it until my life's content, which I do all the time. <laughs> Because, you know, the drawing process takes so long for me because of the fact that I can't just loosen up. So I would love to learn how to draw loosely and freely. If right. I could master that, that would be great. Because I think we both started out drawing the same way as kids, where yeah. we, were, we weren't able to actually pull anything from our imaginations. But you put a picture in front of us or an object in front of us and we could copy it. Yeah, exactly. I can yeah. copy it to a T, yeah. but I can't so, draw from my head at all. Yeah, so latent counterfeiting tendencies. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, can copy anything, just yeah. can't do an original piece of art. Yeah. Okay, 
So that brings me on then to prompt number two. Now, the reason I didn't do related prompts to questions is because I think with some of the ones that I've watched already, people waited to find out your weak spot and then pounced. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that so, to some of them too. <laughs> mm, right, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm, going, I'm just going to give you some ingredients. I'm just going to give you some ingredients to play with. So okay. your second prompt is to include either typography or numbers. Oh, you're ve you're being so good to me. You're being now, these, so good to me. Well, these can either be cut out of magazines. Okay. Or or handwritten okay so one of the two magazines or handwritten okay yeah. I like that I like so that. creative use of typography on numbers I love that I'm excited about this one already <laughs> <laughs> okay I could do that yeah you see you've got the entire world of fonts to play with there as well yes and I I am a typography and I think that yeah. comes from my graphic design yes. background, but yes. oh, I love it. That's why I love my my tissues with printed text and everything. You know that mm. my tissues. Yeah. Are, oh, I'm, I, I'm the same. I'm the same with typography stencil. If I've got a stencil with some form of, of typography on it, yeah, it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. Those are like Absolutely. the only types of stamps I've purchased is like with typography on it and. It's just so much you could do with typography. It's so awesome. Yeah, I've got so much rubber in my craft room that I could yeah. reshoe at least a fleet of cars of the red rubber variety, obviously. Yes, <clears throat> of course. <laughs> okay, so on to question number three. Okay. Having looked back at the art journal projects and projects that you've done over the past year, I can see that there is a definite style to the work that you do, an easily recognisable one. But for you, is there a theme or a topic that you tend to gravitate towards? Hmm. You know what? That's a good question because I don't think there is. And it's funny because for the longest time, I also didn't think I had a style. Because I feel like, yeah, I, I didn't, and I still kind of will look around because I have a lot of stuff like put up around me and I'll look around and think to myself, well, that's, everything just seems so different to me, to me, you know what I yeah. mean? And I'm like, and so I would always say to myself, Samantha, you have to, you have to hone in on something and just have a style and stop being all over the place. But then people actually tell me that the, I have a style. So I guess my all over the place is still a style. <laughs> so well, yeah. I can't say, yeah, I, it surprises me to be honest. And I can't necessarily say that there's a certain theme that I gravitate to. I know that lately I've been loving a lot more collage because I've really found that collage is, is one of my biggest passions and by mm. collage I li I just mean like throwing some kind of layered papers and, and materials yeah I love it I love it I love it or just mm. you know adding a little paint in the background throwing on clusters of collage and then maybe some words like I just really love that collage journal style and I used to love the whole mixed media thing and I used to throw every product I could on a piece of paper <laughs> <laughs> and I found that I'm not as into like the acrylics and this, the modeling paste and stencils mm. and all that stuff anymore. And I'm just more into just papers, fabrics, and maybe some small bits of color here and there. So maybe I could say a theme or style that I gravitate to is, is like collage. But I think that's the most I could say for that. I don't usually think of themes. I don't actually like to design in a particular theme like when no. holidays come around yeah. I'm not really a holiday artist like I don't really do a Halloween page and a Valentine's page I've never really been into themes like that so it's more so just like the style that I gravitate to which would be 
definitely like collage or pulling some papers yeah. out or ripping something up. I love ripping things. So perhaps you need to design some papers that that are just for ripping yeah. up. Yeah, that's that's part of my plan for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. I've, I've already I've already got that going in the brain. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so your third prompt. Okay. And this, I think, is probably going to be the only one that you're going to hate me for. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Because looking at the projects that you've done, yes. they're you know quite colourful, very well put together. The colours are very nicely coordinated. Uh, and you do use some beautiful colour combinations. You're so gonna I'm going to give me some crazy colours, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm going to do exactly okay. the opposite. Okay. I want you to include gray. Oh, okay. That is, and I don't, I and I don't mean the Fifty Shades variety. <laughs> you throw in these little. <laughs> no, okay. Not the Fifty. Let me make a note of that. Not the Fifty Shades variety. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, gray. I don't hate you for that. I love gray. <laughs> I don't use it. I don't use it very often, which is interesting. But mm. okay, I'll throw some gray in there. I could do that. See, people are very strange with color sometimes. I don't like yeah. the color purple. Really? Never have done. Yeah, never have done. But I sometimes deliberately force myself to use it. Yeah, yeah. That's like me and like red or yeah. bright, yellow. Like bright yellow. Yeah, yeah, I don't like I know, red. I know red. I know you don't like reds and yellows. So only as accent colors. But. Exactly. Just as like a pop, I'll, I'll mm. throw it in there. And, and it's funny because I do love gray, but actually when I think of it, I don't put it in a lot of my art. So that'll be, I'm just sitting here looking around and I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> the only thing I see is a canvas I did with gray and yellow, which I hated. <laughs> mm. So that'll be, a, that'll be a good challenge, but a fun one. I like gray. Yeah. So good. incorporate a little bit outside your comfort zone there. Okay. I could do that. Okay. So question number four. Okay. This is tied into what we were talking about a little bit earlier. So how do you or do you plan a project beforehand? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But there's always some form of plan in there. And it's, it's the way my brain works. Like I said, it's hard for me to be intuitive. I've gotten a lot better with being intuitive. So in the very beginning of my channel, I used to plan everything like mm -hmm. I'd have all my products that I'm going to use I'd have a full vision in my head I'd even sketch it out and then I found that that would start to get me a little frustrated so I started to try to be a little more intuitive and I think with collage and this the kind of stuff I love doing now you can be more intuitive and it's a little harder to plan it so if you see a lot of times I'm moving things around for god knows how long because I'm like I don't know where to put this, but I would say that one thing I always, always plan is my color scheme. That mm -hmm. is one thing I have in my head before I even start. And I don't know why I feel like if I start with the color scheme and, and in a general idea of whether I'm going to be, you know, painting something or doing collage or like what style of art I'll be doing that day. Aside from that, I just plan the color scheme. And that usually allows me to, to flow a little better. So I usually just, like, a color might hit my eye, or if I don't have a color scheme before, I go on Pinterest, and I look at color swatches. <laughs> okay. And so, I love doing that. So that's one thing I plan for sure. Everything else right. kind of comes and goes sometimes. So color is your anchor? Yes. Yes. Okay. For me, sometimes it's it's an image. I see an image yeah. and I think I need to use that and I will plan mm -hmm. a page around it. 
Right, only right. occasionally. I've done that before. Yeah, only occasionally do I allow myself to sit down without any kind of idea at all. Yeah. Because then I, I end up just usually making a mess. Exactly. It doesn't work out for me when I do that. I mean, it has a few times. <laughs> But usually the only time that works out for me is if I'm doing something that's just 100% abstract, like with mm. no imagery, no collaging, just like maybe watercolor and pen work, just abstract, then that's, I could do freely. But yeah. when I'm doing other things, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really work out for me unless I have some kind of plan. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. So at least we know that to get you going, you have to find a colour first. Yes. So yes. the next time you lose your mojo, you need some pre-done okay. colour inspiration yes. to get you out yes. of this. Yeah, that always helps. That's why mm. I like the, the mission inspiration, because you add the colours, and I feel like that's mm. always a great addition to like any kind of challenge is to put some colours in there, because for me, that's like the main thing <laughs> yeah and don't think i haven't noticed you haven't done one since september either i know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> not that i've been checking up on you or anything <laughs> i know that was like the last it's funny because that was the last video initially i did before i lost my mojo yeah, and was gone for months <laughs> and, and i came back and it's funny but don't think i don't see them all <laughs> and i will get back no worry <laughs> there's no rush no time limit <laughs> that's my that's my lack of consistency there that's just my <laughs> my struggle my life struggle. yeah no that that's when you know life balance all that kind of thing you know yeah yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we all we all have that occasionally yeah, okay yeah. so your next prompt then Okay. Uh -oh. I would like uh -oh. you. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I would like you to hide somewhere in your project a secret. Ooh, I love that. So whether you do it in illegible script or journaling or you write something down on a piece of paper and then bury it under other layers, I want you I to include that. a secret somewhere in your page. I love that. I absolutely mm. love that. And you know, it's so funny because I, I remember when I first started watching a bunch of journal videos in the beginning, mm. I would see that a lot where people would just scribble on their page with what they know they're writing, but you can't read it yeah. and kind of go over it and, I've never really done that before. I've never put, like, I do do some chicken scratch on my pages, but sometimes I don't even know what I'm writing. So it's not yeah. necessarily a secret, you know? That's mm -hmm. so cool. And so, there's so and many it can ways be, I can do that. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be, yeah. you know, you writing down the name of somebody you absolutely, absolutely hate. Or <laughs> right. it's something that, something that you may have done that you, yeah. you, know, you feel a little bit guilty about. Right. Or it could be anything at all. The fact that you secretly ate an entire cream cake to yourself. <laughs> well, that's no secret. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, no yeah. secret. <laughs> Just but yeah, something okay. That I every time, that every time you look at the page, you'll remember that little secret. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's my. Fa I think that's probably my favorite prompt so far in this whole series. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. I'm excited about that one. Good. Okay. So final question then. Yes. So <clears throat> apart from watching YouTube videos, yes. where else do you go for inspiration? And I don't just mean Pinterest either. Outside okay. of the internet, where do you go for okay, inspiration? Okay, because that was going to that was going to come fly out of my mouth was Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no internet outside, outside of the interest or, or the internet. Um, nowhere. <laughs> That's the sad thing is to be honest, like if we're talking, I know that a lot of people, artists in general will, when they're outside and they're out and about, they're finding all kinds of inspiration in like, you know, 
architecture or the trees or the people around them. And I can see totally getting that influence. But my problem is I don't leave my house. <laughs> so, you, you, do you work from home as well? I don't. But outside of work, that's all I that's when that's the only time I pretty much leave my house is to go to work and then come back home. <laughs> so okay. I'm kind of like. I'm kind of a homebody. I'm kind of a hermit. I enjoy my company. I, I, I like being alone, but I am usually indoors. So I don't get out much to get that influence. So one thing I would say, if it's not the internet, then it would probably be through my mom because my mom is very creative as well. Mm -hmm. And She's always motivating me to do art and she does her own little things. And so when she shows me the things that she's doing, I'll be like, oh, my gosh, that's so cute. Maybe I should, you know, get some supplies out and make some paper clusters and stuff, which is stuff that she makes. And so she influences me. I could say definitely outside of the Internet, it would be my mom. But that's more that's more guilt than influence, isn't it? Guilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because if your mum's showing you things and saying you should do more <laughs> art, then you're only doing it because you feel guilty, <laughs> not because you're feeling true. inspired. You know what? That is kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing it because I'm being told to do it <laughs> from my mother. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, that's more so just being told. <laughs> so then I can't, I would say nowhere but the internet. Okay, so final prompt. Okay, I'm ready. I would like you to include something that is a negative. Okay. Now, when I say a negative, I don't mean a bad thing. I mean negative space, something which <gasps> is inverted or like an x-ray yes. back to front. That is so interesting. You you took time to think of these, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so something yes, which is okay. the reverse of what you would normally get. So that is awesome. That's a that's a bit of a challenge, but I think mm. that's pretty cool actually. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. I like this challenge. Like initially when I started this collab series, I was very worried. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm actually liking the challenges. It's, it's, you know, it's opening up new things in my mind, you know? Mm. This is going to be an interesting project. You guys are probably seeing on the screen right now, and I have no idea what's happening <laughs> at this point. <laughs> they're, probably but... seeing clumps, they're probably seeing clumps of hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That I've pulled out and, like, yeah. <laughs> the paper crumpled up all over the place. <laughs> But yeah, this is a good one, though. Okay. Excellent. So that was awesome. Thank you so much again, Mike, for joining me on this collabness. And thank you for all the amazing advice. I mean, obviously, I'm going to put that to use. I needed it. Hopefully, I follow through because <laughs> I'm one of the people that talks, talks, talks and doesn't do, do, do. But this year it's is going to be a, a different year for me. So I'm hoping to get to where I need to be and yeah. it's people like you guys with you know giving me all the great advice and working with me I really appreciate it Mike yeah my pleasure to to be here and thank you again for asking me to take part no problem at all thank you for being our only guy <laughs> <laughs> and guys make sure that you check the description and go over to Mike's page so he could see so you could see what he's made because I gave him some really cool prompts it's going to be a special type of project over there i hope you're ready for that mike <laughs> yeah i'm girding my loins <laughs> okay so that's pretty much it and thank you again and bye everybody bye
All right, guys, this is it. This is so totally different for me. This took me way out of my comfort zone. Usually, I'm. can you believe there's no nothing on here? No nothing. That, that makes no sense, Samantha. You need to go to bed. It's after 3 a.m. here. This is my life. <laughs> Anyway, can you believe that there's nothing on here? There's no tissue, collage, washi, there's no thread, there's no staples, there's no acrylic, there's no... None of that. This is literally just pens and black watercolor. That's it. I don't think I've ever done anything like this on my channel, so this is totally different. Thank you so much, Mike, for taking me out of my box. But let me go through the prompts. There was one that I literally almost forgot, but I threw it in there in the end, and I got it in, and I made it work. <laughs> so the first one is to include geometric shapes. These are just my makeshift clouds in the universe, ovals, circles, geometric. That's what I call it. <laughs> Number two was to include either typography or numbers, which could have been handwritten or cut from a magazine. So, of course, I just wrote the word illusions because of the whole illusion thing going on. This is a font I just found online and wanted to go with a different style. Usually I write in, like, calligraphy style, so I wanted to just print something out, and I really like how this one turned out. So that's that. Number three was to use gray. I stuck with just black paint, so the gray tones are in there. This is the one that I almost forgot. Hide a secret in there. Initially, I was going to write some stuff on the background and cover it in the black. That didn't happen. Brain was gone. Totally forgot. So in the very end, I just took a black pen and wrote over the black paint and wrote a message along the side here and so because you can't read it it's my secret I am not gonna tell you what it says sorry Shh. <laughs> okay number five the last one was to include something that is negative or reversed like negative space inverted imagery what have you so this is where the negative space comes in the negative space happened here with the pouring of the mi milk in the milky way oh M G Why? <laughs> Why am I only now realizing it's milk? Okay, I used a Pinterest reference where someone had a galaxy thing and white liquid pouring out into nothingness from like a bucket, I think it was. And I didn't even think at the time that I'm assuming that person was doing milk because of the Milky Way. I don't know, but now it's looking like milk because milk used to come in bottles, right? Do they still come in bottles in certain places in the world? I don't know, I'm from Canada and milk comes in bags here. Yes, people, bags. Don't ask. Don't ask me. Anyway, back to the prompts. So that was a negative space. This negative space painting technique that I was dying trying to attempt up here this thing took me forever thank god for time lapse and speeding up videos and cutting things out because i don't know why this took me a fulfilling years to get done but it was hard it was the first time i tried this negative space painting technique i don't know if it's because i just wasn't used to trying to be precise with watercolors usually i just throw it on abstract but this one I had to actually try to be precise, which I failed at. Number two, I didn't get like the values and and tones right, where it should have been like white, faded, 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 till it got really dark, until it turned into black. That didn't happen, but you know what? You know what I was trying to do? Something happened here, and it's cute in the end, and that's all that matters. <laughs> but that was the negative space stuff, and that's pretty much it. I like how it turned out. I threw on the white galaxy type stars in the end. I wasn't going to, but I did kind of feel like it was missing something, so I threw that on. And I like it. I really like it. So that's it, guys. Thank you again, Mike, for joining in on the March Collabness, a.k.a. April Foolishness. <laughs> it was a blast. 
I had so much fun talking to you again. We've spoken before, but I can't wait to hop over to your channel and see the amazing project that you created. Guys, I gave him a real challenge. So check the link in the description. Go check out his video. It's going to be a good one. And there's one more collab coming, guys. On April 8th is the final collab in March collabness, in parentheses, April Foolishness. <laughs> Just one more. Sadly, it's coming to an end, but I've been having so much fun. Anyway, I'm babbling on too much. I need to go to bed. Thank you so much for watching. Check the link in the description. Share it with all your friends. Hope you loved it. Hope you liked it. Stay tuned for the next one. Love you all. Bye!